Hi guys, Mimi G here. Today I'm gonna to be doing a sew along for the Numacall pattern 8292. I love these pants, so let's get started. So you're gonna need pattern 8292. I'm gonna be doing view C. The only difference here is really the length. We have like a cropped version and then we have the shorts. I'm gonna be doing the full length version. I also wanted to point out that now you will see a QR code on any patterns that have a sew along. So you can easily pick up the pattern, just scan the QR code with your phone and it'll take you to the sew along. On the back of the envelope, as usual, you have a list of suggested fabrics along with any notions that you're going to need. Now let's go over the pattern pieces you need to cut. So you're gonna need pattern piece number one. This is the front of our pant. You're going to need to cut two. You're also gonna need pattern piece number seven. This is the back. You're also gonna cut two. You're gonna cut out pattern piece number nine. You're cutting out one. This is our carriers. You will also cut out one of pattern piece number 10. You're gonna cut one of fabric and one of interfacing. This is our waistband. Pattern piece number eight is our yoke back. You're going to cut two. And pattern piece number five is our yoke front and you're also going to cut two. You're gonna cut out pattern piece number six. This is our right fly. You're cutting one of fabric and one of interfacing. Pattern piece number three is our pocket facing. You're gonna cut two. Pattern piece number two is our pocket. You're gonna cut two. And pattern piece number four is our side front. You're also gonna cut two. All right guys, now once you have everything cut out and interfaced, we can start sewing. So we're gonna start with pattern piece number two, which is our pocket, and pattern piece number three, which is our pocket facing. I just wanna note that I did in fact interface my pocket facing. I just wanted a little stability here in my pocket, but that is optional. It does not tell you to do that in the instructions. I just wanted to point that out. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be placing this wrong sides facing onto right sides, just like this, making sure that we're aligning this notch here and this angle. But what I have done is I wanted to finish the long edge of my pocket facing, so I turned and pressed a quarter inch seam allowance. If you don't wanna turn and press and then stitch it and you just want a surged edge, that's fine too. You're not gonna see it, it's gonna be inside your pocket. Um, but I want a nice clean edge, so I went ahead and pressed that quarter inch I'm gonna place my pocket facing again on my pocket, wrong side facing right side. And I'm gonna pin matching that notch. I just wanna hold this in place while I stitch. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the sewing machine and we're just gonna edge stitch along this edge here. And then just to keep everything together along this side here, we're just gonna baste it in place. You're gonna do that to both your pocket and your other pocket facing. Okay, make sure to backstitch at the beginning and at the end, and again, you're just gonna stitch close to the edge. And now using a long stitch, you're just gonna baste along the other edge. Okay, go ahead and finish your other pocket and pocket facing. So now that we have our two rows of gathering stitches on the upper part of our fronts, we're gonna go ahead and stitch our pockets. So obviously right sides will be facing and you also have a notch on your side front. So go ahead and pin there first. So now that I have my pocket pinned to my front, I wanted to point something out. In the illustration, you'll notice that it has the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, and then it goes to nothing here at this notch that you should have marked. So depending on how you're sewing at your machine, right, depending on the direction, you could find yourself sewing this way with the pocket on the inside of you, and on the other leg, sewing this way with the pocket on top. So I, I find it easier to mark that line for myself as opposed to trying to eyeball it and making sure that 5 eighths of an inch is sewn until I go to nothing. So I'm gonna actually use my ruler and my marking pen and I just find this very helpful. I'm just gonna make my stitching line right onto my fabric and right where that notches, you see that it just starts to go to nothing and so now I'm just gonna follow this line. So because I wanna be able to see my pocket, I have my line as my guide, so I'm starting at nothing, and then I will just continue that 5 eighths of an inch. 
Now go ahead and trim this, press your pocket to the inside and you're gonna attach your other pocket to your other front the same way. All right, so I have my pocket pressed to the inside. I went ahead and top stitch, making sure that I ended where my fold is because we need to keep the bottom of this free. Remember, we still need to attach the side front. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this so that the wrong side is facing me. And you're gonna place right sides facing your side front onto your pocket. Go ahead and make sure that you aligned your notches and go ahead and pin your side front to your pocket. Okay, now making sure that you keep the front free, you're gonna go ahead and stitch all the way around using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I went ahead and just basted the side, but I have left the top open, right? I haven't basted the top just yet. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my gathering so that I can fit it onto my front yoke. So the wider part obviously is towards the front for the center front of the pant. You have a notch that should match up to your yoke, so you wanna make sure that that does align. Now I can go ahead and adjust to see if I need to pull more or pull less. Okay, once you have your gathers adjusted evenly and we have the entire thing pinned, including your pocket and side front. We're gonna go ahead and stitch this together using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Make sure to back stitch at the beginning and at the end. And if you need to adjust your gathers as you're sewing, just make sure that they are even. Go ahead and attach your other front to your yoke the same way. And if you see any of your gathering stitches, you could remove them. Okay, once you have stitched your yoke onto your front pant, go ahead and press your seam allowance up towards your yoke. And then I went ahead and did some top stitching. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and start working on our fly front. So the very first thing we wanna do is sew uh, front to front along our center front from the big dot that you should have marked to the notch, okay, so it's just a small stitch. So with right sides facing, I'm gonna go ahead and first, the very, very first thing I wanna make sure that I'm doing is that the seam where my yoke is attached to my front are lined up. And I'm gonna actually pin there just to make sure that this all stays aligned. And then I'm gonna pin where my notch is and now at the sewing machine, again, we're only stitching from our big dot to our notch. Okay, so we're gonna stitch from our dot to our notch. While I have this pinned, I'm actually only pinning this here because I want to make sure that this stays aligned while I stitch here. So we're not stitching up here, we're only stitching from our dot to our notch. So backstitch at the, at the dot and then backstitch again at your notch. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start working on our zipper. So what we're gonna do is on the left side, you're going to press under the fold line. So if you measure the fold line on your uh, pa paper pattern, it's 3 eighths of an inch. So you're going to fold 3 eighths of an inch and you're gonna give it a press. Now you could base this in place if you wanted to, um, but I'm gonna skip that step. I'm just gonna press it because my fabric does press really nicely and stays flat. And now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna turn this over back to the right side you're gonna grab your zipper. Now I have a metal zipper, but you don't need a metal zipper. It's just what I had handy. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and place it so that the edge is on our zipper tape, sort of just like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin it. Okay, now keeping the rest of the pant out of the way, you're gonna go ahead and stitch close to the edge. Okay, so I'm gonna actually start at the bottom. And I am making sure that everything else is out of the way. I'm gonna move my zipper pull. Okay, so now working on the right side, 
and with my pants facing up towards me, you're gonna finish off the edge of your uh, right fly and we're gonna go ahead and pin it. Now that it's pinned and making sure that the rest of your pant is out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and stitch this down using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Make sure to back stitch at the beginning and at the end. You're gonna stop at your dot. Okay, once you have your fly sewn on, we can go ahead and trim a bit of this and then you wanna make sure that with your seam allowance facing your fly that you do understitch. You wanna make sure that this stays to the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim. And then again, just head over to your machine and again, with your seam allowance facing your fly, you're gonna go ahead and understitch. All right, I want you to go ahead and press your fly to the inside and now we're just gonna overlap this. So you wanna just double uh, check that your yoke seams are still matching up, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and pin. And I'm pinning through all the layers. So I just wanna point out that when you overlap this, you wanna make sure that it's laying naturally and you're not pulling it or, or tugging on it. It should just fall naturally and cover the other side of the zipper. Now, two options. <laughs> You could go ahead and baste through the edge of this all the way up. This is a basting stitch, it's gonna be a very long stitch. We're gonna remove it. The only reason we're doing it is so that when we, go ahead, I'm gonna turn this over and show you. We still need to attach and sew the other side of our zipper tape to our fly. And so the easiest way to keep this sort of all together is if it's basted. Now you could leave it pinned, but it will be a tad more difficult to try and get around that just to make sure that everything is laying exactly how it's supposed to. Go ahead to your sewing machine and you're just again through all layers stitching along this edge here. Use a very long basting stitch so it's easily easy to remove once we go ahead and attach the other side of the zipper tape to our fly. Okay, so I have gone ahead and basted through. So while I am still here, I'm gonna just turn this around. Okay, now that I basted it in place, I've changed to my zipper foot because I wanna get a little closer to my zipper teeth. That'll be a little hard here. Um, because we have this basted, we can't get in there to pull our zipper pull. So just work your way around it. Okay, as you can see, I removed my basting stitches. So go ahead and do that. I'm gonna open up my zipper and I'm just gonna stitch the very top of this. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and do our top stitching. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and top stitch from the very top to our dot. So you might find it helpful to use your fly pattern piece as a guide. So I just went and pressed under the seam allowance because that's already taken out in the front. And then you can use it as a guide by making a couple of markings and then following that line. A lot of people find that super helpful. I tend to eyeball it, <laughs> but that's just me. If you wanna do it this way, then what you do is you just place it along the opening, right, where that fold is for the front. And then either using chalk or a marker, you can just make a couple of little dots or a line, depending on what's easier for you. and then follow that guide. All right guys, so we have a finished fly front. We can go ahead and set our front to the side for a minute. Now for the back, we have our back pant and then we have our back yoke. And you're basically going to gather between your dots, just like we did for the front, gather and attach them to your back yoke. You're gonna do the same thing we did for the front. You're gonna press your seams up towards the yoke and top stitch. So now we're gonna work on our back and the process is pretty much the same as the front. This does not have dots, so instead you're gonna stitch uh, from 5 eighths of an inch from the edge to 5 eighths of an inch. You don't wanna gather into your seam allowance, basically. You're gonna two rows of gathering stitches. You're gonna pull your gathering stitches just like we did for the front until it fits onto the back yoke. 
Okay, you're gonna grab your yoke, right side's facing. You wanna make sure that you have the two notches facing the center back, okay? And you're gonna go ahead and pin. You can adjust your gathers so that they're even. Okay, once you have fit your pant onto your yoke and adjusted and evenly spread your gathers, you can go ahead and stitch this down using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then again, just like we did for our front, you're gonna press your seam allowance up towards the yoke and do your top stitching. You're gonna do your other pant and back yoke the same way. So now we're gonna go ahead and place our back over our front right sides facing so that we can go ahead and pin and stitch our inseams. So I'm gonna go ahead and start pinning. You're gonna pin your other back leg to your front, the same as I did here. And now this is just a straight stitch, so head on over to your sewing machine, starting at the hem, sewing all the way up using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and close up the rest of our crotch. So I'm gonna go ahead and start pinning along the center back. You wanna, again, make sure that you're aligning your yoke seams. Once you have it pinned, we're gonna go ahead and start at the back. We're gonna sew all the way through the inseam and we're gonna stop where we have the stitching, right? We had stopped stitching the front where that notch was, so we're just gonna stop, back stitch at the beginning and back stitch at the end. All right, make sure to back stitch at the beginning and we're using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now that we've sewn our crotch, if your zipper is long, for example, I used a nine inch zipper, you can go ahead and trim some of that off. All right, we're gonna go ahead and sew our side seams. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make sure I'm aligning my yoke seams. You also have a notch on the yoke for the side. Okay, you're gonna pin your other side seams the same exact way, and again, just using a straight stitch, starting at the hem, you're gonna sew all the way up using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So now that we have our side seams sewn, this would be a good time for you to try the pants on, make sure that they fit comfortably at the waist. I did end up taking in mine about a quarter inch on either side, just so I had a nice comfortable fit at the waist. Um, you wanna do that before you attach your waistband. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to attach your belt carriers. Now, I'm not a big fan of belt loops. Just I just don't like them. Um, but I am gonna show you, I'm not gonna have them on mine, but I am gonna show you. So the carrier piece gets pressed a quarter inch on each long edge, and then you're gonna fold it again in half, and then you're going to edge stitch along this side so that you can close your carriers. And then you're gonna cut your carriers into three inches each, so you'll end up with five carriers. Okay, so I have one belt loop just so that I can show you. Here's the waistband. As you can see, along one long end, I went ahead and pressed up our seam allowance, which is five-eighths of an inch. I am gonna trim it down to three-eighths of an inch. On the front, if you are doing your belt loops, then you should have transferred where those belt loops are gonna be placed. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one belt loop and you're gonna fold and press under 5 eighths of an inch on one end and then on the raw edge, you're gonna place it along the raw edge of your waistband and you're just gonna tack that down. Don't worry about this top part because that gets done at the very end after our waistband is in place. Go ahead and place your belt loops along the belt loop mark markings if you are doing belt loops. Now once you've pressed your um, seam allowance in, we're gonna go ahead and fold this. You're gonna stop that fold 5 eighths of an inch from the raw edge and go ahead and pin. You're gonna do the same thing on the other short end. Okay, now I want you to go to your sewing machine and just stitch this closed. So I just wanna note that because I did have to take out a full half inch off my side seams, that's a quarter inch on each side, I did remove that half inch from my waistband. So if you did make an adjustment, um, you wanna make sure that you transfer that same adjustment over to your waistband. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start pinning. Okay. 
Okay, now that we have our waistband in place, we're gonna go ahead and stitch all the way around using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now that my waistband is attached, I also have gone ahead and pressed my seam allowance up towards my waistband. And now we're gonna pin so that we can stitch the ditch. Now you have the option of hand stitching this if you uh, prefer to slip stitch this closed. Um, but I don't. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and pin my waistband in, in place. So what I like to do is I like to pin on the right side of my garment so that I can um, stitch in the ditch and make sure that I am still catching the underside of my waistband. But in order to do that, I need to make sure that the folded edge of my waistband is just past my stitching line. And then that's where I'm going to pin. And you can sort of feel where that fold is. So I'm going to pin and I'm going to continue to do that all the way around my waistband, making sure that that fold is coming below my stitching line. You're going to continue doing this until your entire waistband is pinned in place. Okay, let's head over to the sewing machine and stitch in the ditch. Okay, so I have actually changed my presser foot to my edge stitch foot. I just find it really useful to have sort of this little guide stay along that seam. So but you can do this without it. You could do it with your straight stitch foot. Okay, so the whole goal is for you to stay in the ditch, right? In this seam. All right, guys, once your waistband is done, I do want to show you one last thing. If you had done the belt loops, this part, of course, would already be within the seam allowance and it should be sort of loose like this. So you're just going to turn it up, bring it up to the top of your waistband and you're going to stitch across. And that's how you'll secure all of your belt loops. Once you're done with that, all you need to do is make your buttonhole according to the directions of your sewing machine. And I would suggest trying your pants on to check for length before you sew up your hem. Once you're done with that, you are all done. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this sew along. I can't wait to see all of your pants. If you post your pictures on social media, please make sure and tag us at McCall's Pattern Company and also at Mimi G Style. Until next time, peace.